This is The Follow Through, a podcast series presented by the Free Relief Golf Podcast. Thank you for subscribing to this bonus content and welcome to Hashtag Team Freddy. It's great to have you here supporting my journey and I hope you enjoy following along as I document my golfing progress throughout the competitive season. Without much further ado, let's give you what you came here for. Hello and welcome to The Follow Through, presented by the Free Relief Golf Podcast. If you're listening to this, then you have chosen to subscribe to this bonus series of podcasts, and I'm very grateful to you for your financial help in supporting my golfing season. For this episode, we're playing in the Battle Trophy, hosted by Crail Golfing Society. Crail is situated in the East Nuke of Fife, Scotland, a 10-mile drive east of St Andrews. This tournament itself... It's a 72-hole stroke play event which counts towards the Scottish Golf Order of Merit and has been contested since the year 2000. It is open to male amateur golfers with a handicap of 1.0 or less, with the actual cut-off for entries ending up being around 0.0 from looking at the reserve list in 2022. There's a starting field of 72 players and a cut after 36 holes, which incorporates the top 40 players and ties. Going into this tournament, my handicap sat at plus 1.0 exactly, and we were feeling pretty confident after our last outing at Craig Miller Park in Edinburgh. If you haven't listened to that episode of the follow-through, go back, check it out. You've subscribed, you might as well. With all that being said, let's get on with it. Let's start with my thoughts after my practice round a few days before the tournament began. Okay, we're here. We just finished our final practice before the Battle Trophy, which is taking place at Crail this weekend. 36 holes each day, just like Craig Miller Park opened last week. 36 holes, then a cut. And then 36 holes, it's taking place over the Easter weekend. And today is the Friday before it. I've been practicing up at the Duke's Golf Course, which is based on the outskirts of St. Andrews. Just doing a bit of short game, bit of putting. And it's feeling good. And I'm feeling confident going into the weekend. But I went for my practice round at the Craighead course at Crail. There's two courses, Craighead and Balcomi. Balcomi's a par 69, lots of par threes. Never actually played it, amazingly. But have played the Craighead plenty of times in the past. Played in all sorts of different weather conditions because I play... It's one of the courses on the road for the uh, Winter League, and I've played this competition, the Battle Trophy, once before in 2019. So I had the practice round on the Craighead on Wednesday, so two days ago, and the conditions actually were pretty benign. It's known because it's right on the coast, on the edge of the East Nook of Scotland. It's known for its winds, it's known for its bad weather, but we had it in benign conditions, which was perfect, just had a chance to really map out the course and get a good game plan in place. Really feel like I'm turning a corner in terms of course strategy and game plans um, in the last few weeks. Craig Miller, you recall last week, I felt really confident with the plan that I put in place to, you know, all the spots I had to go and to shoot three under each day. And in the end, that would have obviously won the tournament, but easier said than done. Uh, this week, the scoring is going to be slightly harder. It's a tougher golf course in general. Less holes that kind of give you the score. You've got to work hard for it on quite a, quite a few of them. There's par fives. There's four par fives, four tough par threes, which I think are going to be the making of the champion this week. And yeah, anyway, we'll get, we'll get onto that. We'll get onto the specifics of the course. It looks like it's going to play a bit softer than normal. So we had a lot of rain on Tuesday, basically a whole day of rain in the Fife area. And I've never seen the green so receptive at Crail on the Craighead. Um, and that's going to change things because that means that you can kind of fire with your irons a bit more. I'm not going to be aiming at flags too much, but, you know, you can, if you miss it slightly, if you're going for middle of the green, you leak it left or right, it's going to get softer bounces. It's not going to roll off too much. And a lot of these greens are raised on the Craighead, so... That's going to really help 
scoring in general and help keep momentum in rounds when you miss a few shots, as you inevitably will do. And just like Craig Miller last week, the greens are super slopey. If you've never been there before, they have a lot of ridges in them and tiers and kind of hunchbacks I'd describe them as, you know, just big plateaus in the middle of the greens that you've got to deal with. So even if you just play for middle of the green and try and be safe, you're still going to have pretty funky putts coming up from 20 and 30 feet. And there's going to be a lot of slopey three to six footers that you're going to have to make if you're looking to put some good scores together in this tournament. But in terms of the walk, I would say last week at Craig Miller, it's super hilly and there's no killer walks. It's on a bit of a side slope in general, of course, but it's a gentle slope just going down towards the sea. So it's not going to be a tough walk this week. I've still got the trolley that I use all the time and I was going to have a friend caddy for me, but it's probably not going to happen now. Certainly not on the Saturday. So, but you know, as much as it would have been nice to have a chat with them, it's not a massive loss in the scheme of things. We're still going to be able to walk around and not lose too much energy, I would say. But the greens are looking great. Really smooth despite being soft. And they always are at Crail, to be fair. They've got a good green keeping team and especially for the battle trophy, they really get their affairs in order. Now if you haven't been to the Craighead before, I'll give you a little talk through it in terms of what I think of the course and what my favourite holes are. And there's so many good holes and there's a sea view basically on every hole as well. It's quite a new course. I believe it was built in the 90s uh, by Gil Hands, who is a known course architect. But I think what I love about it, and this is what a lot of people love about Muirfield as well, is that all the par threes, all the par fives face in different directions. So depending on the wind on the day, you're not going to get all the par fives downwind and it makes the course play super easy. You're going to get maybe one downwind, but if that's the case, you get one into the wind. And so the wind is kind of an equalizer on the course. If you, For every hole that it gives you an opportunity, it's going to take away another opportunity too. Uh, and the, the par fives are good solid holes, but I'd say some of my favorite holes are the par threes. Um, the, the fifth hole is the first par three. It's super long. There's no bunkers and it just shows that, well, certainly no bunkers around the green. There is one way short for, lesser golfers I say but no bunkers around the green it's just a long I guess you'd call it a fair dunt if you're in Scotland a lot of holes are called fair dunt and this one certainly is a dunt it's um the other day I think it was pretty benign I hit a hybrid to the middle of the green so we're talking 230 to the middle of the green I believe so I think the forecast is for that to be slightly into and off the left that's going to be a tough hole, but if you can just put it in play, like the front or middle of the green, I would love. I'll take that four di- uh, four rounds in a row, you know, assuming I make the cut. But even if you get around the green, we can up and down. If you can make two or three threes on that hole throughout the week, that's really going to pick up strokes on the field, I'd say. Next par three is the seventh. They're split by another par five, but the seventh, it looks out to sea. And that was a full five iron for me the other day to get it towards the front middle of the green. So sometimes they stick the flag at the back there. They certainly did in 2019 at the Battle Trophy. It's a pretty exposed green. It's well bunkered. It's an elevated, the tee is elevated, but the green is also elevated. So big runoff areas to the right and left. Bunkers guarding the front, a big pot bunker guarding the left. You just got to step up there and commit to a long to medium iron and then the 13th par 3 again different direction but right on the coast there's in fact there's outbound stakes for the sea <laughs> which is right there and the five coastal path goes right round that bit as well there's a lovely I'll, I'll, I've put pictures up on my Patreon so you can go check it out but there's a lovely wall that guards the back of the green as well out of bounds beyond that but the hole itself is only 150 yards to middle really and the forecast is for it to be just right to left crosswind so that's going to be a nice short iron in that just a scenic hole but well it'd, it'd be famous last words to say it'd be, it gives you a respite but it's just a fun hole to play whereas some of them are a bit attritional and then the final par three is probably one of the holes that the Craighead is known for the most. It's the 17th hole. 
and it has one of the craziest greens you're ever going to see for a hole that I hit four iron in the other day, pretty much dead calm conditions. So it could easily on the day be playing a three iron or a hybrid, which is exciting. But, um, you got a bailout short right where you can pitch up. There's bunkers guarding the front, middle and left. And there's a bunker on the right hand side. If you go long, there's just a huge runoff. The green is elevated again, a huge runoff. You cannot go long. Not that you're likely to, given how long the hole is. But the green is kind of split into thirds so in a weird way. So the left side of the green is one third of it. And it's pretty flat, but well, it's consistent. It's a consistent slope from back to front of the green. And that's just one level. And then you go down to the middle level, which is the back right of the green. And that they do stick the flag there quite frequently, which is a bit of a killer. It was there the other day in the practice round and, you know, you, you can definitely try and hit the middle of the green and two putt, but you're still going to have a slopey putt wherever you hit it. And then the front right of the green is the lowest tier and everything kind of slopes and funnels into that. And if I remember rightly, 2019 Battle Trophy on the Saturday, the pin was there. But they were a bit more baked out at that point. So with the soft greens, it really gives you a chance to hold that green because in 2019, I believe that green was reject rejecting shots. So maybe it'll play a little bit fairer this year, who knows. So there's some great holes at this course. There's also a good variety of, there's some long par fours where you've really got to knuckle down, hit a good drive, good, uh, good approach shot. And there's some short par fours as well, which give you opportunities. You've got a little flick left in. I'm going to be avoiding trying to have the flicks, I think, because just haven't been able to practice them as much this week. Um, since Craig Miller, my game is in pretty good shape at Craig Miller, but since then I've been on the indoor golf simulator. There's an indoor golf center in St. Andrews, which I'm a member of at the moment. I've been doing a lot of practice there and so I've had a couple hours this week hitting balls in there, just getting my distances as dialed as they can be, hitting a lot of golf shots, getting in the groove, staying in the groove. But I haven't done a lot of wedge practice because if I was looking to do 60 to 90 yards in those simulators, if anything, I kind of hit the ball too high and it keeps hitting the wooden roof and you'd lose golf balls or they just ping everywhere and it's really inconvenient for everyone. So I kind of stick with iron shots in that simulator and I haven't really had the chance where I've been working on my putting and chipping I haven't gone out there and hit lots of kind of mid-range wedge shots uh, which is normally a strength of my game but right now I just haven't quite got the touch if I've got a 60 yard shot I might hit it 70 I might hit it 50 just haven't quite got those dialed so my game plan this week is going to be to avoid those shots so on those short par fours I'll be laying back probably with hybrids and three irons to leave myself 90 to 100, just full of wedges that I've been practicing on the simulator and I know that I've got those shots that you can properly commit to and know you've got the distance, you know. But other than, other than that, and it's going to be hopefully fairly straightforward to avoid those mid wedges. It's not like it's quite open off the tee, Craighead. It's all about the greens and your shots into the greens and leaving your ball in the right place. It's not like I'm going to be hitting into rough, having to hack out and then save myself with the wedges. Generally, we're going to be in play off the tee and then it's going to be all about around the greens and putting on those greens as well and dealing with that, having good pace control, which I've also been practicing. So the game's feeling good. I'm confident after last week. Last week, you'll recall, I felt like I belonged. And this week in my practice round, I played with one of the played with a guy called Connor who's one of the better players in the field and you know we've got to know each other over the last year or so uh, through through different events seeing each other at different events but it was good to play with him he's a plus five handicapper at the moment and I believe he's in the top 600 in the world something like that in terms of the wagger rankings so it was good to play with him again it adds to the theme of belonging um and it's good to see his game up close because he's going to be up there in contention this week and there's no reason why I can't be. And he was very complimentary about my game and now it's time that I've got to believe in my game. And I'm really looking forward to this weekend. I feel like good results around the corner. It might not happen this weekend, but that's not going to change anything. I'm about as prepared as I can be, which is the same as I felt with Craig Miller last week. I've got my game plan in place. I know where I'm laying up off tees. I know exactly with the shots I'm going to try and leave myself. Yeah, I'm just really looking forward to kind of getting my teeth stuck into it and trying to have a good go. In terms of the scoring, last week at Craig Miller, the cut was seven over. 
I think the conditions are going to be pretty similar in terms of the wind. You got we're looking at a ten to fifteen mile an hour wind, a bit of cloud, maybe some sun trying to peek through. That's what we're looking at for both days, Saturday and Sunday this week. And the Craighead's a tougher course, so I'd be expecting the cut to be around nine or ten over. If I play my game with this game plan, you know, I'd love to shoot under par and I know I'm capable of it, but this game plan we've got is for shooting one or two under par. No reason why we can't pick up some birdies on the par fives and the short par, th- sorry, par fours. We just got to knuckle down on those tough holes and the par threes. We're probably going to drop some shots on those, but there's no reason why we can't be around par or maybe slightly under. So that's what we're going to be trying for. And I guess that's all I've got to say for now. Uh, the next time you hear me, I'm going to be <laughs> giving a report of day one and hopefully that will include a report of how I made the cut and we're looking at the prizes because this week there's a few more prizes than Craig Miller. Last week, top 10 got you into the prize vouchers, but this week to make your money back, you've got to get in the top 15. The cut's 40 out of 72. Let's go get it. Okay, right. <laughs> That's the end of day one at the Battle Trophy. Um, I am delighted to say that I've made the cut. It's the first time I've ever made the cut in a national golf event. This one being run by the Scottish Golf Union. Well, you know, it's part of their order of merit. It's run by Crail Golfing Society. But made the cut. Looks like I've made it kind of comfortably. I don't know exactly where in the field I am. But um, it's just been a long day, so this will not be a long update. Um First round was four hours 40, uh, and there was only a four hour, I think only four hours 50 were allowed in between morning and afternoon tea time, so we had a real turn and burn lunch. Um, I got cottage pie, uh, there were was, there was some other options as well, but I got cottage pie, I got it to take away as well, and I've still got some like cold congealed cottage pie in my golf bag right now because... Uh, I lost a fork as well, so any opportunity I had to eat it uh, disappeared very quickly. So maybe I'll heat that up in a microwave. Um, just in the car outside my house now, just a, a debriefing because there's not much signal at Crail. But yeah, second round is even. That was four hours 15. The wind was just up today, perhaps a bit stronger in the morning than the afternoon. The afternoon began off a bit, a bit more benign perhaps, but the morning was pretty consistent like, 12, 15 mile an hour and a bit of a cold wind as well. We were starting at 10 o'clock first tea time for us and then our afternoon round. Oh, sorry, we were 10, 10 in the morning and 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, but yeah, uh, so long day, just a grind. The pins are actually exactly the same as when I played this tournament in 2019. So that seems to be just a guaranteed, maybe it's to keep the pace of play up. I don't know. Maybe it could have been five hour rounds if they'd stuck them in worse places, but they're pretty fair. There were some that you really, if you got above the hole, the greens were so pure and slick. If you got above the hole on a bit of a slopey putt, uh, you really had to watch out that you didn't run it by six or seven feet. But, so I shot, it, well, yeah, let's get to the nitty gritty. So I shot 72 in the morning, which is level par, and didn't give anything away at the end like last week at Craig Miller. So I really learned my lesson and the finishing stretch at, uh, the Craighead course at Crail is a really tough finishing stretch, so I really did well to knuckle down and get that done. Um, I actually birdied the 10th in the morning and then parred in. So anyone who knows the bat nine at Craighead will appreciate that feat. But um, So I was pleased with that. Really kind of started off steady. I birdied the first today in that first round. Um, bogeyed four or five... Birdied eight, bogeyed nine, bogeyed that twice today actually, which was pretty silly because that's only a 350-yard par four, kind of playing downwind today, downhill. Um, I won't go into that. And then birdie 10, then piled in. So I ended up shooting level, which, um, you know, it was a good grind. There was some good short game in there today. And I think there were only five or six guys who broke par in the morning. So that really, like, that was a statement score, and I was really pleased to get in the clubhouse with that one, get to dine off it. Well, I wanted to dine off it, but we only got 10 minutes for lunch, so I didn't get to dine off it for long. Um, and then the afternoon, I doubled the first hole, the par five, um, just drove in a bunker and then probably got too greedy. I also mis-executed the shot out of the bunker and left it in there and um, 
you know, just had to have real patience because he two over through the first hole and then suddenly, you know, the course is just playing tough. It was a grind. It was going to be a mental grind. And, you know, my legs right now, my calves are gone as well. So you knew you had a long second round ahead of you as soon as you start like that. But I really settled down, a couple of pars, steady pars, bogeyed the fifth, which is that long par three I was talking about yesterday. I bogeyed that twice today, but they start to pin in the back right bowl. So I think it's playing 230 without much help today. There was like a slight help in wind, but um, bogeyed that. And the afternoon I was just sauntering on. I birdied that eighth again, bogeyed that ninth again. Um, and then actually I birdied 11 and 12 to get back to one over and I stood on the 15th tee one over. And at that point, you're kind of properly in contention of the tournament. I wasn't really thinking about that. What I was thinking was this tee shot does not suit my eye. And in the morning, I absolutely – what doesn't suit my eye is it's a par five. It's reachable. It was today with the wind because the wind was just kind of down and off the right-hand side. And it's a dog leg left to right. And there's gorse on the left, gorse on the right. But actually, it's kind of open. There's a big fairway. There's bunkers on the right-hand side. It's like 245 to reach them. So – they're right in the wheelhouse. And in the morning, I just sucked it up and pounded a drive down there and hit a three wood through the green. Um, so in the afternoon, I didn't fancy the tee shot. I actually took a three iron back to the tee with me and I just flared this driver right and never saw it again um, into the gorse. Then laid up with a three iron and stayed really patient. Laid up with a three iron, laid up with a five iron, hit a wedge on the green, two putted for my seven. So I made two doubles this afternoon on par fives, which is a shame, but both of them were kind of patient because the disasters were off the tees, really. And, yeah. So, you know, in the afternoon, I ended up shooting 76, which was four over. And uh, that was with two doubles at par five. So, but all in all, short game really saved me in that afternoon. It did wonders in the morning, too, but I didn't hit loads of greens. And that's kind of what the Craighead's like. You can easily miss greens and you've got to be holding out well. And today, I really did. I did not give many shots away. Um, on the greens, that's for sure. Um, didn't necessarily make loads of birdies, but definitely was pretty clean holding out from six to eight feet. And I got some really good compliments from my playing partners about that, which is really pleasing because, as I said the other day, I've been putting work in with the putting and um, putting a lot of time in. It's feeling good. And I've got some good thoughts going with it at the moment, good feels, and it's encouraging. So I shot 72, 76, 148 total. I think that's going to make the cut comfortably. I didn't properly look at the leaderboard, but um, I think there's two guys that have had two rounds of under par today. So the leading total right now must be like two or three under. So we're four over for the tournament. We're only like six or seven off the lead. Um, you know, in terms of ambitious aims for tomorrow, I was delighted with my ball striking today, delighted with my putting, delighted with everything really. I just gave away a few shots with probably tiredness and just some bad luck, but... Honestly, everywhere I looked today, there were just people having disasters, and I think that helped me deal with it. Kept my attitude good, just like Craig Miller last week. Stayed really um, calm and confident and stuck with my game plan. You know, the, the only time I did not stick with my game plan today was on the third hole, which is a short par four, dog leg left to right. The wind was slightly down and off the left in the morning. And my plan was to hit a hybrid and just have a fuller wedge left in. And in the morning, I thought, oh, I might be able to get to the front of the green here. Um, so I pinged a driver and left myself one of those shots. I said I didn't want to leave myself like a little 50-yard chip shot up a hill, had to land it somewhere and fly it. And it was horrible. And I made a four, I made a par in the end. But in the afternoon, I made sure to lay back. And if anything, that was a good reinforcement in the morning. But no, you got to stick to your plan. Otherwise, we're going to put ourselves in some horrible places today. So really pleased with that. Um yeah, like I say, I'm not going to go on about it. Really delighted with that performance, how I'm playing. There's still shots that we can save and not fritter away, but overall today we did we did more saving than we did frittering. So uh, we've obviously learned lessons from last week at Craig Miller. I'm going to go in and lay down because my legs, I can't feel them or the times I can feel them, they're aching. And um, yeah, are there any questions I need to cover? No, I've kind of covered everything. Um, I'll be back with a report tomorrow from day two of the <laughs> Battle Trophy at Crail, which I'm very excited about. I uh, look forward to seeing some new flags, uh, maybe playing with some new people. And yeah, we're going to have a good day. Can't wait. And whatever happens, I'm going to be learning something. I know my game's good enough now. Absolutely buzzing. Cannot wait for dinner and a shower. See you tomorrow. <laughs>
Okay, so we are in the car after day two at the Battle Trophy. was delighted yesterday to make it to day two, to make the cut, my first ever national golfing event, or for the first time in a national golfing event. And I couldn't wait to see what today held. And today certainly has been a very surreal day. And 100%, I can guarantee that you will not have guessed how this has gone. So this morning I shot a 75. We were playing in two balls, which was a nice touch instead of three balls yesterday, which were quite slow, four hours 40, four hours 15, as I said. Two balls today, we whipped round three and a half hours, shot a 75, three over par. Played pretty steady. Um, birdied the first. Couple of bogeys at four and five, just like I did yesterday. Couple of birdies, couple of bogeys coming in. I actually bogeyed two of the last three uh, to to finish three over par. Um, but that's not really the main story because the main story is after we got to the back of the green, uh, my playing partner said, "Right, I've got your front nine. Let's go through the back nine. So we went through the numbers, signed the card, gave it in, and went and got the lunch, chili nachos. And a lady came up to me, and as soon as she came up to me, she was admin." I knew exactly what had happened. You now know exactly what happened. I signed for the wrong score and I was disqualified from the competition. The first time I made the cut and I ended up disqualified and it was, um, I think I took it well. I think I dealt with everyone very well. Um, but I'll tell you exactly what happened. I, w I went to the front desk with her. We went through it and straight away I could see that the fourth hole, uh, I just hadn't checked the front nine. Because he said, my playing partner said he had the front nine, so let's go through the back. And for the first time, perhaps in my life, I did not check my entire card for the numbers. He just he said, right, your level. And I said, yep, yeah, no level for the front. That was what I was. And I just assumed it for whatever reason. I just didn't go through my normal process. I don't know if it threw me or what. I can make all the excuses I want. It's completely my fault for not checking my card. It's my responsibility, after all. And um, a straight away I could see the fourth hole. He'd put me down for a four when I actually had a five. He put me down for a par instead of a bogey. Um, and that was it. I signed for a lower hole score because the totals don't actually matter. My totals added up on the card. He'd put me down as level for the total. Um, but it's the hole scores that matter. It doesn't even matter if your totals are wrong. It's the hole scores that matter. And I'd signed for a score that was lower than what I actually got which is worthy of disqualification and that's fair enough and then we looked at the rest of the card and he'd put me down for a five on the sixth when i had a four and he put me down for a four on the seventh when i had a three so he actually got three of my numbers wrong on the front nine <laughs> so it's one of those where obviously i've got to check that but in for whatever reason i didn't just the way things worked out i felt so silly i felt like such a mug and i'd had so many appreciative memories well, sorry not memories i had so many appreciative messages overnight from people good luck messages you know go get them tomorrow i was overnight i was tied 16th place and top 15 get vouchers and i think i said yesterday i was only six or seven off the lead. no actually i was end up being nine off the lead because five under ended up leading it but, you know i was I felt in contention even with three over this morning i could i was in contention for a voucher and then i just I was finally getting my name out there, mixing it with the big boys, and then I make a complete, I mean, it's an amateur event, but such an amateur mistake. And I normally pride myself on being thorough and professional. You know, last week at Craig Miller, I was saying how proud I was of my preparation, and and this week was more of the same, really following my game plan, feeling professional, and then I make the most rookie error you've ever seen. And I know there's famous cases. The, the one that springs to everyone's mind is the Mark Rowe case in the 2003 Open at Royal St. George's where he was actually, I don't think he was leading the Open. I think he was maybe one off the lead or two off the lead Saturday. And he plays, well, he ends up playing a th great third round to be one or two off the lead. And then he and Jessica Parnovic hadn't even swapped cards and they got disqualified for incorrect scorecards there. Obviously, that is a way worse scenario and I'm... Um, I'm not comparing this to that, but I do feel absolutely terrible about it. I felt like I put the competition into disrepute. I felt I didn't want people when they saw a disqualified symbol next to my name instead of a number. I didn't. Things ran through my head like I didn't want them to think that I was a cheat because I pride myself on my professionalism. 
And th- those are my main fears and concerns. I was just embarrassed. And, you know, th- as soon as it happens, you just want a hole to, you want the ground to swallow you up. Big hole, swallow you up, and you don't have to deal with it. But um, I stayed calm. I mean, what else could I do? I knew I was disqualified as soon as I saw it. So just made sure I spoke to everyone, went through the correct processes. And yeah, and my playing partner, who's apologetic, perhaps not as apologetic as I would have liked. He was, he was apologetic. But we'd actually got on so well during the round as well. It probably would have been easier if he was a nasty person. Then I could have just harboured hatred against him. And we'd had a really nice game. And it was just one of those mistakes. I mean, I've never seen someone get three scores wrong on, on a on a card. I mean, to be fair, we, when we went through the bat nine, he had one of my scores wrong as well. So we had four of my numbers wrong on the card. Um, maybe seeing that on the bat nine, that should have been a trigger for me to then check the front nine. But for whatever reason, it wasn't. Um... So, yeah, so that happened. So that's me out of the competition. And then I wanted to know if I could play the afternoon because I still wanted to be part of it and play. And for them, obviously, it was two balls. If uh, if I'd left and he was a one ball, that would have mucked things up completely. It would have meant he'd had to go out with another two and make a three and it would have slowed play up. So they were very happy for me to carry on playing. It just wouldn't have counted for any competition purposes. So I ended up, I did play the afternoon. And actually, as it goes... Um, it was a very weird place to play golf from, to be honest, because I wanted to be intense and shoot a score that then I could afterwards compare with the field and I could have said, oh, I finished in this place or this place, but I really could not get the intensity going. I was I was trying really hard and trying to go through my process on every shot, but at the same point, I just couldn't get the intensity going. And then it, my playing partner completely capitulated, to be fair, because the weather got really difficult. It went from pretty steady wind, as I've been saying, 12 to 15 mile an hour, the wind started getting to 25, gusting higher than that, probably gusting 30, 35. And the course became really tough. And the scoring in the afternoon reflected that. Um, the guy who won in the end, who was five over, five under overnight, I forget what he shot in the morning, but he ended up shooting 73 in the final round to win by seven. And it was all, I believe he was nine under after that first round. So he must have shot 68. Yeah, he shot 68 in that third round and then shot 73 in that wind to win by seven uh, to finish on eight under for the tournament, which was incredible, an incredible performance, really. But yeah, that did not happen for us. I think my playing partner had an 85. Um, <laughs> I probably would have shot something like 83, but you know, I wasn't grinding on the short putts and and on those slopes and in that wind. In the end, my score just can't be that reflective of how I would have done had it still been, had it still been worth something, you know? And uh, so it was good to go out be part of it but I did feel very sheepish very humbled very like I say just amateurish you know I kind of raised my head above the parapet I was feeling a little bit confident and things like that just uh, throw you off your I don't know throw you off your mentality a bit but what I am grateful for is for that to happen that's such a good learning experience I am never ever ever going to not check my scorecard again. I will always forever check my scorecard thoroughly. Uh, I was talking to one of my friends after after the round just to get some perspective and on things. And he said, when pros go into the score 10, obviously they've got lots of money riding on it. Benefit of this situation is I didn't have loads of money riding on it. I only had maybe the prospect of a voucher that would have paid my entry fee, you know. But he said that pros, when they go into the scorer's tent after, they put little ticks to make sure that next to each number to make sure that they've checked. That's their that's their sign. And in the future, I'm 100% going to do that. So that's a learning experience. All of it's a learning experience, really. It's been a great weekend. Uh, it, this has soured it somewhat. But ultimately, I know, uh, I hope when I reflect on this, I hope when I reflect on it that I'm philosophical and I'm going to take a lot from this because uh, I handled myself well, carried myself well, had a good attitude. I, I thought that was just going to apply to the golf course, but I had a good attitude off it. I dealt with everyone well, I think in a very courteous manner, which I'm proud of. And while I was upset at being disqualified, it was obviously the correct decision. And, you know, this could have happened in open qualifying or something that truly could have been life-changing. You know, this could have happened in the final round of the Lynx Trophy or the final round of the gold medal. 
or just the British amateur or the Scottish amateur. It, it, this could have happened anywhere and it could have deprived me truly of a of a life changing, of a career defining result. Perhaps it could have you know, I could have been in third place and I could have been on for getting my world ranking and that could have cost myself that. So ultimately I haven't cost myself too much. I still got the experience of the Sunday. Still got to play golf in good company. Got to experience what it's all about making a cut. And I played really good golf this weekend. I got to see the Sunday flags at the Craighead course, which was playing immaculately again today. The flags were, I'd probably say, similar difficulty to yesterday. You know, they were still tucked and on some slopes, but they were gettable if you had, if you're from the fairway and you had the wedges. I birdied quite a lot of the par fives today just by laying up and having wedges, not necessarily having to hit the greens. Uh, but ultimately, golf is kind of immaterial today. Yesterday, I showed myself that I can play. Today, I showed myself that I've still got a lot to learn in terms of traveling and and just the process of playing golf rather than the actual technicality, the game side of playing golf, the admin side of it. Today, I'll show myself I need some work and I need some stop checks. And in the future, I'm going to tick those numbers and that's going to really help. So tough learning lesson today, but that's what this podcast is all about. That's what this series is all about. It's a horrible feeling <laughs> to be disqualified. I'm glad that I get the chance to put it out there that I'm not a cheat. Really pride myself on not being a cheat. Um, and Crail were nice enough to, on the scoreboard... I wanted to make sure none of my rounds went down as NRs. They put me down as a withdrawal, uh, which I think helped me save face a little bit, which I probably shouldn't have been so concerned about, but I really just don't want people to think I'm a cheat, especially, you know, I had the rules thing that happened last week at Craig Miller, and I really tried to go about the correct process. For these things to happen <laughs> just a week apart, a lot of things are being sent to try me, and that's fine. Like, that's what we're about we're trying to put ourselves in the situation to learn a lot from it and sometimes it's not just going to be the golf that we learn from we've got to learn these other things as well so really disappointed would have liked to have had a finish I think my, if I had shot 83 I would have finished about 30 if to be fair after my if I'd had the three over in the morning and that 11 over in the afternoon if we were counting that just for the record I think that would have been about right because uh, we've ended up staying to the end here today uh, just to see everyone in and it's been won by the same guy that won Craig Miller last week so he shot 11 under last week and I think he shot about 7 or 8 under this week um, with that final round 73 so Battle Trophy is a beautiful trophy as well by the way it's got like three silver people on a big round wooden centrepiece it's just a beautiful trophy and yeah one experience you know this is no one else is going to have that story from this week it's a unique story. And we're going to learn from it. And when I go back next year, for sure, the organisers are going to remember me. So maybe that's a good thing as well. At least I didn't kick off in any way that they could have remembered me in a negative way. So I'm sure lots of people have gone through this and we've just got to deal with it. I'm sure if I had recorded this straight after my first round, I would have been maybe less philosophical. But I'm recording this after my second round. The sky is blue, it's been very windy, it's nice to be in the quiet. I'm going to go home, I'm going to have a shower. I've managed to last 72 holes, which is... I'm ecstatic about, really. You know, I'm, I'm less tired today than I was yesterday, perhaps because I didn't have to grind so much on the second round. But um, at least I've got 72 holes under my belt. Cannot wait to have a day off tomorrow and do nothing. But yeah, I guess that's the update. No result to finish with, but I did make the cut. I have played good golf this week, shot level yesterday, four over, three over on a championship course. And that is still not maximizing everything I've got in my game. We know we've got more. We've just got to refine it. And this is still April. We have got a whole season ahead of us. Right, that's day two. I guess I'll be back with my reflection in due course. Right, let's just have a quick performance review after having had some time to reflect and gather perspective over the last week or so. Uh, do I still agree with my immediate post-game evaluation? 
Well, I certainly agree with the overall sentiment of my immediate post-game thoughts and feelings. I had no option but to be philosophical about the unfortunate events that occurred. I was in the wrong, I made a mistake, and if I had, you know, and if I had proverbially kicked off and demonstrated a poor attitude of anyone external to myself, then that would have been completely wrong of me to do so. I'm pleased that I stayed pretty calm given the unfortunate situation and having had a few days to contemplate, I've realised one key thing. No one really cares or certainly no one cares about this as much as I do. People have been disqualified for signing for wrong scores in the past and the situation, whilst unfortunate for me individually, is not that unique or unprecedented. I have been determined to be transparent and open with friends about what happened since then, people are wondering where my scores went on that Sunday. And really, the general response has just been an, oh, no, a hands-on-head kind of reaction, more exasperated in tone than judgmental or gravely disappointed, as I was fearing on the actual day. I did fear that label of being a cheat or any negative reactions to it, but really, it seems the only negative reactions that have come from it certainly to my face, have you know been from myself. People were more supportive than perhaps I was giving them credit for. The overwhelming positive from the week as a whole is the state of my golf game and the success of it translating across multiple alternative styles of venues over the last few weeks. We've had links at Crail, we've had Parkland at Craig Miller and everything in between. The golf game can perform on all sorts of courses now and that's really exciting. And that has to be the focus. And right now I still feel good about my game and kind of grateful overall that I've had this experience to learn from because not everyone, I mean, hopefully not everyone will have had that opportunity and it, it might come back to bite them in even more inopportune time than it did for me. Maybe I had to go through this at the Battle Trophy to maybe take it forward into open qualifying or something much bigger and important to me. So what have I learned? <laughs> I think that could be obvious. How will I build on this performance going forward? Well, golfing-wise, we've learned that our practice is directing us along a productive pathway. and We must continue to hit a large quantity of purposeful balls with feedback, like we've been doing on the indoor simulators with Trackman at the Indoor Golf Centre in St Andrews. We're going to be hitting more balls outside now the weather's good. But if I can keep having ways of getting that feedback we've shown that it's really helpful for our long game and given that the weather's good that gives us a chance to refine our short game even more so now so we can spend more time out in the warm actually on greens and be able to practice our chipping and putting and pitching talking of putting putting is still everything <laughs> that, that has been reinforced the last few weeks some of the par saves some of the birdie putts that i've made have been really satisfying Putting's still everything, and I'm relishing the chance to get better at it with every passing week. Every week is an opportunity to get better. I'm seeing myself improve. I just cannot wait to see. This is April right now. I cannot wait to see how well I'm going to putt in June, in July, when the peak season really starts kicking into gear. I've played rounds of golf since the Battle Trophy at Crail, and when adding up my scores at the end, this is perhaps the biggest thing I've learned. I've put a tick next to each score, to make sure I've checked the numbers themselves, the whole scores, with my scorecard markers. With practice, the ticks will become habits, and I'm looking forward to feeling assured in, my, in the future. When submitting my cards, hopefully I'll be proud knowing that I've learned a tough but valuable lesson from this overall experience at the 2022 Battle Trophy. My next big tournament is going to be the five-team championship representing the new golf club St Andrews at Pitt Reevy. I hope you can join me for that. Thank you for subscribing and supporting my golfing journey. Your help, as I said at the beginning of this podcast, is much appreciated. And I'm looking forward to hopefully sharing more positive news with you throughout the season. Until then, I've been Freddie. You've been lovely. See you next time.